One powerful piece of software you might want to try is Scrivener, which is a tool designed primarily for writers, but is also excellent for organizing a complex information project. You can get a free sample or a free trial, I should say, from their website. I think it's good for 30 days. The price is fairly reasonable. I generally use Scrivener for all my non-academic writing. I use some more specialized tools for academic writing, but I have used Scrivener as well. This is how I wrote my SAS thesis, which I'll show you in a bit. So you could use this for note taking. I'll give you an example of that. We'll create a new project here. And we get a nice empty uh, notebook. The motif here is a binder with different sections. It by default includes a draft. Um, if we were to start writing, like if we were writing like a course paper, we'd write it here, everything would go in here, and this would all be compiled at the end into whatever format we choose, a docx, uh, word export, we could export it as a PDF, we can even create Kindle books. Uh, I wrote my uh, nonfiction book, Eating Glass in Scrivener, and with a couple settings, I can export both to Kindle and into a PDF that is ready to be printed on demand as an actual book. But for our purposes, let's say we want to just take notes. So we want to organize our binder in a way that makes sense to us. So we don't really need research, but let's just call this SAS book notes. And in this folder, everything is either a folder or a note. We could go ahead and do something like Beinhacker, the origin of wealth, one of our SAS books from 660. We could put all of our notes here. These are my notes. On the information panel, there's all kinds of information we can put here. I could write a summary of the book. Beinhacker provides an overview of complexity in economics. I can also write kind of meta notes here that I don't want to be part of my actual notes. Let's say I also want to include an article by Brian Arthur um, on complexity economics that we'll read in 660. And I can type my Arthur notes. Here. And now we have a neat note for each reading that we do, very much like the Evernote example I showed. We can link between notes, um, copy document link, um, Beinhacker presents similar ideas as Arthur. Paste that note, uh, and we can switch between the two, all right? But again, like Evernote, we're only getting a link to the entire note, uh, not to sections within the note. So we'll close that out. Scrivener has some neat features like a corkboard view. This will show the notes that were uh, at the top up here. I can give Arthur a note, um, lead in article to Arthur's book. And now you can imagine over time, if we had one of these articles for each thing that we read, we have a nice little library that's very easy to browse. We can do things like tagging, um, add custom meta metadata. We can color code different things into groups. There's many different ways to use this. And that's one of Scrivener's great values is you can configure it however you want. There's a lot of ways to use this. Maybe it makes sense to you to organize our readings by class. 660 is innovation. We can just drag these into the 660 folder. We could have another folder for 644. And very easy to move these things around. All of your notes, everything in this project is stored in a Scrivener project file. That makes it easy to manage. You could just leave this thing open and always have access to all of your notes. The downside, like with Evernote, is that you're now locked into a proprietary data format. Um, actually, these are all rich text uh, files, but they're all embedded in a Scrivener project. So it's not super easy to get your notes out. And uh, you're kind of playing in this very nice walled garden. There are iOS apps, so you could potentially sync this to your iPhone or an iPad. Um, you can also use Scrivener to store resources like pictures or PDFs. I'm going to load up a thesis I wrote while I was at the University of Jordan. I actually wrote the thesis itself in Word, but I used Scrivener to organize a lot of my research. It's very good for that. 
Uh, I later moved away from this because I found there were much better ways to organize PDFs, which I'll talk about in my Zotero videos, but this is an option, particularly if you really just want to focus on your thesis and don't imagine growing a library of PDFs over the course of your career. Um, so my, my thesis compared different narratives about Islam. Why do some people say Islam is evil and some say it's a religion of peace? So I had all these different articles from both the far left, the far right. So I've got articles on Islamophobia and hegemony and Wahhabism from Saudi and all these different things. I've got notes, I pasted news articles in and organized this all in a way that made sense to me. If I wanted, I could even have all this research here, but then also write my draft up here in the, in the draft section and have all of it in one place. Um, I'll show you one more example. I wrote my SAS thesis itself in Scrivener. I kept my research elsewhere, mostly in Evernote at the time, but I used Scrivener as the writing tool. And here's what my draft looked like. You can see I have folders for each chapter and I broke the document down into different sections. Um, if I highlight the folder here, I, I showed you the corkboard view earlier. I can also look and see summary stats, how long each section is um, in words. I didn't give these statuses, but I do do that now. Like with my, uh, my book, Eating Glass, I, I tracked which draft was on. So it allows you to break a complex project down into small parts. There's my lead in quote. Here's my introduction scene and work on each piece in isolation. And this is what makes Scrivener different from something like Microsoft Word, where everything is heaped into one document. Now, usually if you write in Scrivener, your professors find it easier to do the reviewing on a Word document where you can track changes. So a common workflow is you write in a tool like Scrivener, and then once it's time to get serious about revisions, you can compile this into a docx, and at some point you may switch to Word. Uh, it's a part of the workflow I don't like, but it's just what tends to happen. Um, some people find it easier just to stay in Word. But again, my goal is just to show you some common tools and you can make your own informed decision based on what works for you. So in summary, you can use Scrivener as a note-taking tool with a page for everything that you read. You can use it to gather resources in one place and you can also use it to write. Um, in the next videos, I will show you some alternative ways to store research and notes. So let's do that next.